from Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. On News Hour tonight, court remand suspended Accountant General in Kuje Prison over 109 billion fraud allegation. President Buhari appeals to electorate to vote APC in 2023 for continuity. U.S. reports first polio case in nearly a decade. Hello and welcome to News Updates, to News R on Trust TV. I'm Deron Ifade. Justice Adeyemi Ajayi of the Federal Capital Territory High Court has ordered that former Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, and three other defendants be remanded in the Kujie Correctional Facility. Idris and his co-defendants are in before the judge on Friday are facing charges bordering on stealing and criminal breach of trust to the tune of 109 billion naira by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The report. The former Accountant General of the Federation and his other defendants, Olusha Guakindele, Mohammed Usman and Gazewa Commodity Market and Exchange Limited, earlier pleaded not guilty to the 14 count charge levelled against them by the EFCC. Making an oral application, Chris Uche, counsel for the ex Accountant General, prayed the court to grant bail to his clients. But the trial judge held that in the interest of justice for all, the defendants should be remanded in prison. Charges have been read. And interestingly, what are contained in the charges are quite different from what was dished out to the media. Because in the media, it has, all, it has been all over the place that uh, the man collected billions of Naira from the Treasury. But what we have seen shows that the contents of the book are quite different from the title of the book itself. The prosecution counsel, Rotimi Jacobs, responds to issues raised by defense counsel. When you see the charge, you will see what was in the media before. It's the same amount, it's the same figure. And uh, you see the confessional statement there. It's only in our country that uh, Somebody who make a confessional statement will still come before the world and tell the world that he's innocent. So it has to tell you about our, our value system. President Muhammadu Buhari on Friday in Abuja told stakeholders of the All Progressives Congress APC that the unity, security, and prosperity of the country would matter the most to him beyond his days in office. He said this when he received APC stakeholders led by the national chairman of the party, Senator Abdullah Adamu, in the state house. President Buhari recounted that when the presidential running mate, Senator Kashim Shetima, was presented to him a couple of days ago, he had said he would reserve his comment till the handover ceremony on May 29, 2023, at Eagle Square. The national chairman of the party, the chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum and the Governor of Kebi State, Abubakar Atiku, Bagudu, and the Shatima, in separate remarks, expressed gratitude to the President for his exemplary leadership, which has strengthened the party in the aftermath of the convention. The Vice Presidential candidate reiterated the willingness of the APC presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu, and himself to serve Nigeria with justice, equity, and fairness. What matters to me is the unity, security, and prosperity of Nigerians, even beyond my days in office as president. And I am glad that the APC is on course towards that eventuality. When the presidential running mate, was presented to me a couple of days ago. I said I will reserve my comments till I hand over to him and the new president on May 29th, 2023 at the Eagle Square. 
stakeholders, members, delegates of our great party converged in Abuja, in Eagle Square, where we nominated the flag bearer of our great party in the person of His Excellency Ahmed Bola Tinubu. On the 11th of this month, our candidate, after due consultation with stakeholders across the country, to help him, to assist him in deciding who becomes his running mate for the 2023 uh, general election, he finally decided after getting your nod, your buying announced to the country who his choice for vice president of his ticket will be. And that is our brother seated by my right out there, uh, Alaji Ishetima. Your Excellency, I want to thank on behalf of Ashwa Jibola uh, Metinebu, who is unavoidably absent due to a communication gap. I want us to celebrate our progressive governors who have shown leadership, who have equally shown commitment to the Nigeria project. PDP stakeholders with the president at the villa. Also from the villa, President Buhari has urged the electorate to vote the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the next general elections to ensure continuity and stability in the country as well as the West African sub-region. The president said this on Friday while receiving a delegation from Nasarawa State led by Governor Abdullahi Sule at the State House. He said the off-season elections in Anambra, AKT, and Oshun states had confirmed his administration's irreversible commitment to credible and violence-free polls in the country. The president told the high-powered delegation that his signing the Electoral Act earlier this year is an attestation of the fulfillment of the administration's determination and commitment to the tenets of the rule of law. Governor Sule told the president that the delegation came to the villa to appreciate the president for approving the takeoff and takeover of the Lafayette Airport, reforms for the completion of the Lafayette Kefi Road, ongoing construction of Abuja Kefi Akwanga Lafayette Makudi dual carriageway, and appointment of prominent sons and daughters of the state into different positions in the federal government. It is an attestation of the fulfillment of our determination and commitment to the tenets of the rule of law. The off-season elections in Anambra, Ikiti, and Ocean States confirm the administration's resoluteness on this matter. The forthcoming general elections will provide us with the opportunity to convince the electorate on the need for continuity to enable our party to consolidate on our achievements in the last seven years. The government and people of Nasara State, as usual, have a great role to play in returning our party to governance in the 2023 elections in order to create a path for greater socio-economic growth and development. We are here specifically to appreciate the benevolence of your administration and your personal indulgence for approving the takeover of the Lafayette Airport. By this approval, Your Excellency, we can now see our airport being properly utilized not only as the cargo airport that was originally meant for, but as a commercial and more importantly, a security airport. Let me use this opportunity of this thank you visit, Mr. President, for finding our prominent and distinguished sons and daughters of worthy appointment into different positions in the federal government. To us in Nasarawa State, these appointments have continued to give us a sense of pride and belonging as they offer us the opportunity to show support 
and contribute our quarter towards the realization of the policies and programs of your dynamic administration. We also appreciate, Mr. President, on the ongoing construction of the Abuja Kefi Akwanga Lafia Makodi Dual Carriage Road, which has reached appreciable level of completion among numerous other projects that we have in the state. Legal representation has stalled hearing in the suit challenging the delegate list and they just concluded APC primary for Nasarawa West senatorial election at the Federal High Court, Lafia. Abubka Abdullahi reports that the case was filed by Labaran Magaji, who contested the election that produced Shehu Tukor as winner of the primary. The report is presented from the studio. The case was filed by an APC aspirant, Labaran Magaji, alleging that the delegates list used during the primary elections that produced Shehu Tukur as the candidate of the party was doctored. Different counsels, however, claim to have been briefed by litigants involved in the suit. The judge, Justice Nehizina Afolabin, after listening to counsels on representations and other sundry issues, fixed 3rd August next year as the next adjourned date to enable parties resolve issues before hearing speaking shortly after the proceeding. Councils for Labara Magaji and APC Gali Umar and Abdullah Hibawa said the gray areas will be sorted out before the next hearing. There are some defendants who are not served and the case was adjourned for them to be served with processes because sometimes the reason was that they did not appear in the matter earlier. So I think there is a mix up. They were being served at the headquarters in Abuja. So when they came into the matter, already the processes were already in Abuja. So they have no access to some copies. So and uh, we look at their reason as being genuine and the, the court obliged them to be served in the interest of justice. Yeah, what transpired in court today was just a simple thing, mix up in the service of process. The, there was an application by the second defendant for his processes to be deemed properly filed, but the motion was not served on some of the, of the parties. The, the plaintiff was served, the plaintiff filed a counter affidavit, that counter affidavit was incidentally not served on all the the, the other parties. So the matter has been adjourned to enable all parties to be served with all processes filed by the parties in this matter. Also speaking, Labara Magaji, the plaintiff, promised to continue to follow the case to its logical conclusion. To this end, these adjournments these are the instance of the defendants and we are really conscious of the practice direction issued by the Chief Judge of Federal High Court that this matter is going to be heard expeditiously and we are waiting patiently the ends justify the means. It will be recalled that crisis rocked APC in Nasarawa State over alleged tampering with the original list of the delegates in some local government areas generating accusations and counter accusations among party members in the state. The current APC National Chairman Adamu represented the senatorial zone before his resignation to take up its present position. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has recognized Sadiq Wali as a governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for Kano State. This has led to confusion among members of the party loyal to the state executive led by Shehu Shagagi, especially after the electoral umpire earlier told journalists that it only monitored the primary elections that produced Mohamed Abacha as a gubernatorial candidate of the PDP. But with the list of the gubernatorial candidates pasted nationwide on Friday at INEC state offices, Daily Trust observed that Wali's name and that of his deputy, Yusuf Dambata, were displayed on the wall at the Kano INEC office. Reacting to the development, the INEC Kano State Public Relations Officer Ahmad Adam Maulud said the commission at the state level submitted the outcome of the primary election it monitored 
to the national headquarters. A federal high court sitting in Abakaliki, a Boeing state, on Friday recognized Princess Anne Agom Eze as the senatorial candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, for a Boeing South zone. This follows the withdrawal of the governor's younger brother, Mr. Austin Umahi, from the race after gaining the ticket during the party's primary just to pave the way for the governor who lost as a presidential candidate of the ruling party. But the resident electoral commissioner in Akwaibom State, Mike Igini, has revealed that politicians who procured multiple forms were criminals and risked two years' imprisonment. Recall that the governor, that is Governor Umahi, through his counsel, Roy Mweze Umahi, had dragged the Independent National Electoral Commission to the Federal High Court in Abakaliki to compel the commission to recognize the governor as the authentic senatorial candidate for the Ebony South Senatorial District. Delivering judgment on Friday, Justice Fatou Riman cited Section 115 of the Electoral Act 2022, saying the governor was not an aspirant and cannot participate in the election or pre-election matters of the All Progressives Congress as regards the Ebony South Zone, whose primary held on the 28th day of May 2022. Mixed reactions are trailing the suspension of the Emir of Brinin Yandoto Emirate by the Zamfara state government following the turbaning of bandit leader Ado Aliru, Aliru who was recently turbaned as Sarikin Fulani of Yandoto Daji Emirate, is said to be on the wanted list of the federal government. The report. A civil society activist, Bachiri Sarkin Fulani, believes that the turbaning of the bandit leader as the Sarkin Fulani portends grave danger for the immediate community as well as the society at large, stressing that it means the bandits are in control of Alero's community. A situation, he said, is a dent on the image of the state. For him, the suspension of the Emir of Bindi and Doto Emirate, Aliyu Marafa, must be uploaded by people of goodwill and charged the state government to hit hard on political office holders who attended that ceremony. If the governor have directed such events, they should have done it on a certain basis and there should be no reason for them to pass it. That should be contradictory. Just two weeks ago, the governor was said that there should be no license to take apps, and now you are negotiating. So we want to have a clear direction of what the government want. Do you want to negotiate? Do you want to take arms? Do you want protection by the security agencies? We, so the government should be firm and straightforward of what they need to solve this problem. A journalist, Muhammad Sidi, however, is of the view that the installation of the bandit's leader, Ado Alero, as the Sarkin Fulani of Ando Tandaji Emirate, was one of the ways the Emirate used to broker peace with the bandits in the community to enable farmers return to farming activities in the troubled area. He observed that the cancellation of the turbaning and subsequent suspension of the new Emir of Bindi and Doto Emirate, Aliu Marapa, will lead to renewed attacks, killings and abduction by bandits in the state. What we have learned is that, honestly speaking, the government cannot conquer bandits, uh, especially in the northwest, because a number of uh, uh, a number of groups uh, in, security, uh, in, in, in collaboration with other security personnel have been have been assigned into the forest for quite a long time, but not not a single not a single bandit enclave not a single bandit enclave is destroyed. Bachiri and Sidi believe that if the federal and Zampara state governments must address insecurity, there is need to come out with a clear-cut strategy to deal with the terror groups so that peace and stability can return to the troubled communities. The Director of Personnel Management, DPM, and a veterinary doctor with the Department of Veterinary Medicine, in Kotangora, local government area of Niger State, have been reportedly kidnapped. Daily Trust gathered that the DPM was kidnapped on Friday on his farm along Kotangora Mariga Road, alongside some laborers working with him. 
while the veterinary doctor was reportedly abducted on Thursday morning while returning to Kotangura from surrounding villages where he had gone to vaccinate animals. Daily Trust gathered that the bandits later called and demanded for 15 million Naira ransom. The Niger State Police Public Relations Officer, DSP Wasiu Abiodun, is yet to confirm the incident. No fewer than nine people, including a nursing mother and her less than a year old baby, were on Friday reportedly abducted in Kuchi community in Munya local government area of Niger State. Daily Trust is reporting that although no life was lost, dozens have fled to Sarakin Power, the headquarters of Munya local government, as well as Gwada IDP camp in Shiruru local government, as well as Mina, the state capital. Niger State Police Public Relations Officer Wasiu Abiodun confirmed that nine people were kidnapped. Abiodun said police tactical teams with vigilance members had been drafted to the area and are on the trail of the hoodlums for rescue of the victims. Bandits have killed five mobile policemen who are said to be on special duty from Kano and three civilians at Gatikawa community in Kankara local government area of Katsina State. Sources says the incident occurred on Wednesday when over 300 gunmen stormed the community and started shooting to scare residents. One of the sources said the gunmen rode on motorcycles and went from house to house, cutting away anything of value, including money and food items. He said that several residents were also injured, especially those trying to escape from the gunmen, and some had since relocated to neighboring communities for fear of another attack. This is the second time this month that police officers have been killed by bandits. It could be recalled that gunmen killed a senior police officer in charge of the Dutma Council area, Assistant Commissioner of Police Aminu Umar, alongside one other police officer and several civilians. Meanwhile, the Commissioner of Police, Katina State Command, CP Idrisu Dabandoda, has presented checks of 14.6 million naira to families and next of kin of deceased police officers who died while in active service on behalf of the Inspector General of Police, Alkali Baba Osman. And gunmen on Thursday night attacked Fobur community in just east local government area of Plateau State, killing five persons. A source who resides around the market said the gunmen came on bikes and shot anyone in sight. Three persons were killed while two other victims were shot at a place called Naton, where the gunmen rode past. It was gathered that the gunmen then branched into Fusa community, where they kidnapped one Haruna Ajik. When contacted, the police public relations officer PPRO of the Plateau State Command, Alabo Alfred, confirmed the incident. A federal high court sitting in Sokoto on Friday sentenced a car dealer, Umar Muhammad, to five years imprisonment for contravening the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC regulations. Muhammad, a resident of Sokoto Metropolis, was however given an option to pay 125,000 Naira as fine. In his judgment, Justice Ahmad Mahmoud said, he considered the evidence and exhibits, exhibits tendered by the prosecution during the trial and also said he considered the convicts guilty and leniency pleas as well as being a first-time offender. The court found the convict guilty of failure to submit declaration of activities in line with the EFCC's extant regulation on customer identification and rendition of returns on transactions to the Special Control Unit Against Money Laundering, SCUML. 
The police have arrested a 35-year-old man, Abubakar Hamidu, who allegedly raped a 12-year-old girl, Amina Ibrahim, in Gumbi Metropolis. Speaking to newsmen, the Gumbi State Commissioner of Police, Ishola Babaita, said the suspect and the victim were taken to the police clinic in Gumbi for medical examinations. Ibrahim Ismail reports. The 35-year-old Abubakar Hamidu confessed to have lured the 12-year-old girl Amina Ibrahim to his room with 500 naira and committed the said crime. But according to the police report, the 35-year-old suspect raped the victim twice in a month. I raped a girl. I offered her 500 naira and took her to a room. She screamed after I raped her. Three weeks later, the police went to my room and arrested me. It was a devil's act. The police command also paraded other four suspects over alleged motorcycle theft in Gombe State and one, Awali Akubu from Bauchi, in possession of military uniforms. Uniform, uniform don't so the, the shoes and the uniforms are not up to 5,000 naira each. I buy from soldiers and sell at checkpoints. I buy some at 3,000 and sell 4,500 and 4,000 then sell 5,000 naira. 5,000. We break into the house while the owner was sleeping. We took the bike and went away. This is the first and the last theft. People should pray for us. The Commissioner of Police, Gombe State Command, Ishola Babaita, said the suspects will be charged to court. I want to assure the citizens of the Gombe State that the police command is committed, that the command is committed to their security and criminal cases will be transparently be investigated and suspect be charged to court to uphold the course of justice. In addition, the command once again call on politicians not to engage youth in act of political thuggery and substance abuse for their selfish interests. While the parents and the world are advised to ensure that their children are not involved in this act of lawlessness or criminal activities. The police commissioner asked Gombe residents to assist the force with useful information that will complement its effort in ensuring adequate protection of lives and property from Gombe. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. You're watching News Hour on Trust TV. Coming up after the break, how lack of parking space obstructs traffic flow. Stay with us. Nigerians, elections are here again. Let us shun violence. Let us play the game according to the rules. Do not be a thug. Say no to violence. Let's rise and defeat violence, crime, and sabotage against the peace of our nation. Nigeria is the only country we have. We must do everything to keep it united. We must avoid any act that promotes hate and disintegration. Say no to separatist movement, terrorism, fake news, hate speech, religious bigotry, and any act that tends to divide us as a nation. Watch out for strange gatherings and suspicious movements. Restrict access to sensitive documents and data, the disclosure of which may damage national security. Educate your staff and family, particularly on measures to safeguard information and report security breaches. Apply relevant legal security guidelines to protect yourself and your neighbors. Due to misinformation and wrong choices, some idle persons resort to vices in their greed to get rich quick. They resort to kidnapping, killings for rituals, and other heinous crimes. Avoid wrong use of the social media. Before you broadcast that false message, think twice. Ask whether it will promote
around bees or violence. For safety at home, still be security conscious. Educate your household on safety tips. Report all suspicious movements and persons to the security agencies nearest to you. Be a good citizen. Be patriotic. To pass security information, please call 0813 222 2105 0915 399 or send a mail to dsspr at dss.gov.ng. This message is from the Department of State Services, DSS. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is News R on Trust TV, a recap of our top stories. Court remains suspended Accountant General Idris in Kuje prison over 109 billion fraud allegation. President Buhari appeals to electorates to vote APC for continuity in the next general elections. To other stories now, prolonged strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, is taking a toll not only on students, as some parents and guardians in Abuja express frustration and disappointment with no end in sight to the industrial dispute. They call on the government and ASU to reach a compromise in order to end the lingering strike. Musa Luka tells us more. The prolonged strike by the Academic Staff Union of University, ASU, has been a burden to many Nigerians, especially students and parents. The union has for over five months been on industrial action, marking academic activities in public universities to be on hold. The Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, is planning a protest in solidarity with the striking lecturers, which government said is illegal. Many parents find the situation disturbing, calling for an end to the strike. It affects us parents very much because by now, my children supposed to have, been, have uh, graduated, but uh, three of them are still at home. Uh, since uh, supposed to, two supposed to graduate last year, and. Uh, Due to all this uh, incident strike here, uh, strike here and there of us. And there is nothing we can do. We cannot fight government, but it's very unfortunate for what we are experiencing in our country. And if you look at, uh, if you go online and you see them celebrating all their children graduating overseas. So the ASO strike is affecting the whole region. Precisely as in a, a, a taxi, like my junior one in school, they have been abandoned in the, in the village, they have been abandoned there, nothing for them, no school, nothing, I mean, so it's also affecting, it's also affecting us, that sponsor them, believing that, okay, with so, so time, I think we might have done with this one, and then no one or two things to, to forge ahead with. You understand me? So the ASO strike is not only affecting the students, it's affecting both the whole region, as I said. I'm studying law and my 200 level, going to 300 level. But because of the ASO strike, we started a exam, but we couldn't finish it. Then we have to, but the strike came, we back on the strike. Now, my wife, she's also a student. Assuming there was no strike, all of us we have nowhere we have got into. But because of the astro strike now, we cannot go. And by the time they resume, they'll be demanding for school fees. 
and it will come once. That may also affect me negatively. I have my daughter, I have my sons. So it is hitting them very badly. All of them, they are, they are, some of them are going to farm to help, uh, to help us sometimes, help the mother. Is that what a student is supposed to be doing? When he was supposed to have, must have been graduated, now he's doing all that things, you know. It's very bad. Now uh, labor want to go on strike. If that can solve the problem, let everybody, let all has down. Banks, secure everything. Let the a a airport be shut down so that they travel by car, they see how bad our road is. If that can make them send the school, uh, children back to school, good and fine. The question on the lips of many is when the strike will end. Musa Luka, Trust TV News, Abuja. Tanker drivers along Guagualada Highway are obstructing free flow of traffic by parking their trucks by the roadside. The drivers said lack of parking space for their heavy-duty vehicles to offload goods gave them no alternative but to park by the roadside. Gaza Yakubu, who visited the Axis, tells us more. Heavy-duty vehicles are the common sight in Guagualada Highway. This road is a major access in and out of the FCT, yet the free movement of vehicles, especially in the evening hours, is a challenge attributed to the tanker drivers. And some of them, you know, they are so... the kind of things they carry, the diesel and all those things, if anything happens here, it's going to be a disaster, considering a lot of people that are in this park and all that. So I think they, they need a park rather than parking on the sideways like this. this even this morning, it, you know, it happened that one of them almost ran into one other car that was in the front. It, it had to be the attention of some of the, uh, you know, I, I can call them uh, maybe the chairman around here. And they came and they, they had to sort it out before the truck left. The lack of parking space puts a serious challenge ahead as the tanker drivers are using the highway as drop-off terminal, thereby causing unnecessary traffic great luck. We're here because of our customers. Some connect with us from Lagos, while others in Asaba and different parts of the country. When my company sells the goods belonging to Abuja customer, we wait here. But if it is sold to other states, we transport it to them. Here is our casual depot. There are parking space, but there is none in Abuja. There are parking space in Tafa. Kaduna, you cannot park by the roadside because of the danger. Spending 500 naira to 700 naira to park safely is better. Also hindering traffic flow are the business activities that are gradually coming up due to parking by the roadside. Until a parking alternative is provided, the drivers will continue to make do with the space they can assess at the detriment of those plying the highway. Gaza Yakubu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And similarly, poor condition of parking space has been identified as the major reason contributing to roadside parking by drivers of articulated vehicles at Ngurore, one of the biggest weekly cattle market in Adamawa state. In an interview with Trust TV leadership of the Heavy Truck Drivers Association of Ngurore Market said when the parking spits get necessary attention, their contribution to the economic growth of Nigeria will be higher than what is currently obtainable. Salis Lawan has a report. These have been the challenging experience for the heavy trucks drivers on Gurure Market. According to the leadership of the Heavy Trucks Drivers Association, bad conditions of the parking space sometimes lead to the loss of goods worth millions of naira. Mohammed Mohammed is the chairman Heavy Trucks Drivers Association Gururi, and he explained some of the challenges contributing to the parking by the roadside to include security of the goods. 
Government at all levels are trying, but we want them to do more. Gombeola Road is a busy road. Commuters can see cars and trucks being disorderly parked on different lanes, which is leading to accidents almost daily. The main cause of this accident is we have space for trailer park that can contain more than 500 trucks, but there are no structures that can accommodate the trucks, and we can't access the place. Despite their contribution to the economic development of the country, however, the heavy trucks drivers face different challenges in the cause of transporting goods from one region to the other. While identifying some of the challenges, they solicit for government intervention, which stakeholders believed will help reduce high cost of living. We are taking grains, cows and uh, goats, dry fish, onions. We are all carrying from here, we move over there with this matter. We are not, there is no gain inside. We are just doing because of business. We don't have anything to do. If you put your motor, the diesel, from here to all those places, once if you went there, there is no gain inside. There is no gain inside. Most at times, security personnel or agent block roads and demand us to pay token for them to clear the way. And if you seek for leniency, you will be harassed. In fact, there are those that will order you to make money transfer if you complain of not having enough cash. For instance, if you load goods or livestock from Mubi town to Calabar, you may pay at least 600,000 naira to security agents and area boys, even if you are transporting legitimate goods and have way bill. Stakeholders said Gururi heavy trucks parking space, if constructed, will have the capacity of accommodating over 700 articulated vehicles. These are some of the challenges the drivers and the leadership of the union complain about. They are looking for an urgent intervention from government to avoid parking on the main road, which causes accidents and many challenges to the road users. From Yola, Silas Lawan, Trust TV News. Building confidence, providing investment opportunities, and maintaining international partnership capable of taking people out of poverty took center stage in a two-day business meeting between Chinese and Nigerian investors and Abochi state government. The Chinese ambassador to Nigeria, who led the Chinese delegation, said they are looking forward to partnering with Bochi government in a project that will benefit all parties. Adam Imam tells us more. The Chinese envoy who is in Bauchi to discuss issues of investment opportunities and mutual understanding between Bauchi and China, looking at the possible critical sector of the economy to create jobs for Bauchi citizens. He noted that China and Nigeria share same similarities in building human capacity. Without the emotion, really, we cannot live a life. But we have to try to make a rational decision. If we get rationality, that we have to get knowledge, we have to get emotion, we have to get feeling. So my first purpose is emotion combined with rationality, that we try to make a rational decision for the two countries, for two people. Jian Chun also maintained that if people are rational thinkers, there will be no problem in the area of investment. Everybody recognizes we have difficulties, we have challenges. We just mentioned that we have insecurity, but we should have confidence. This is my one year and three months. I discussed almost every occasion. Insecurity really is a huge topic, a hot topic. But my decision at the last Chinese lesson, Chinese experience in the year 1950s. Governor Bala Muhammad identified various areas where investors can key into saying that the state government has put in place modalities that will improve business opportunities and ensure environmental friendly policies. Some of the measures we have taken is to make sure that there is intelligence gathering in the every nook and cranny of the state, community policing, engagement with the communities as you have seen. We have visited the area and other stakeholders, even what we are doing here today, we have our stakeholders 
that we always cherish because they mean so much to us. So that is bringing inclusion and therefore enhancing our social cohesion. He said that over 4.2 million hectares of arable land which can support a systematic shift from subsistence farming to mechanized large-scale commercial agriculture is available in the state. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Let's now join Chamun Dabeng for business news. The federal government is considering a ban on the use of motorbikes and mining activities in response to the terrorist assaults that occurred at the Kujé Correctional Facility on July 5th, as well as other attacks that were reported nationwide. Operators in the mining industry responded to the news by stating that the federal government's ban on mining will result in thousands of young people losing their jobs and worsen the already dire security situation in Nigeria. Speaking on behalf of the Nigerian Miners Association, the operators questioned the connection between mining operations and the recent prison break at the Kujé Correctional Center in Abuja. The National Secretary of Miners Association of Nigeria, Dele Ayaleke, stated that the organization was anticipating more information about the proposed ban by the government and caution must be exercised to prevent the restriction from worsening insecurity in Nigeria. Even though debt service exceeded income in the first four months of this year, the federal government has predicted that the cost of the fuel subsidy will reach 6.7 trillion naira in 2023 if drastic measures are not taken to eliminate it. According to the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, the fiscal deficit reached as much as 3.09 trillion naira between January and April of this year. She attributed this to the heavy strain placed on government finances by large subsidies. She spoke in Abuja during the public hearing on the draft medium-term fiscal expenditure slash fiscal strategy paper for the year 2023 to 2025, which marked the official start of the 2023 budget planning process. Nigeria's oil and gas income between January and April of this year fell by 51 percent. As expected, benefits from rising oil prices continue to evade the country due to a serious shortfall in oil output and the weight of gasoline subsidies. Oil incomes were expected to be 9.37 trillion naira for the entire year of 2022, but only 39% of the proposed 3.12 trillion naira for April to January was actually realized. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, says the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, is anticipated to reduce Africa's trade deficit by 51% in the near future. According to UNCTAD, the adoption of the AFCFTA is also anticipated to increase intra-African commerce by roughly 33%, which claimed that it has substantial implications for marine transport and trade in its most recent report titled Review of Maritime Transport 2021. However, it was underlined that the full realization of the benefits of the AFCFTA depends on adequate transport infrastructure and services throughout Africa, especially connectivity for maritime trade. According to UNCTAD, an Economic Commission for Africa study with a 2030 time horizon forecast the needs for transportation infrastructure, service, and equipment as a result of the implementation of the AFCFTA. That's all for business news. I am Chamu. Dubbing. And on the foreign scene, the United States has reported its first case of polio in nearly a decade after health officials in the state of New York said a patient had tested positive for the disease. The state's health department said on Thursday that the case was detected in a resident of the Rockland County, about 48 kilometers north of Manhattan. Testing suggested the case of the highly contagious virus may have originated outside of the United States. The department said in a statement, the person is no longer deemed contagious, but investors and investigators are trying to figure out how the infection occurred and whether others were exposed. Officials also told healthcare providers to be on the lookout for more cases and urge people in the area who are not vaccinated to get the shot. 
Draupadi Murmu, a woman from India's tribal minority, has been elected as the country's president by legislators. The 64-year-old politician, who is from the Santal tribe, secured the largely ceremonial position with the support of more than half of the electorate of MPs and state legislators. Partial results released by the Election Commission shows more than 4,500 state and federal lawmakers voted in the presidential election on Monday and ballots were counted on Thursday. Marmo's victory was assured as she was backed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party BJP, which, donates, which dominates federal and uh, state politics. Momo will be the country's second woman president after Pratiba Patil, who held the position for five years from 2007 and succeeds Ran Nath Kovind, the second president from the Dalit community, the bottom of the Hindu caste system. Dinesh Gunawadena has been sworn in as Sri Lanka's new prime minister just hours after soldiers and police cleared an anti-government protest in Colombo. Gwani Dina, a veteran member of the ruling Sri Lanka People's Front and an ally of the Rajapaksa political family, took the oath of office on Friday before President Ranil Wakremesinghe, who was elevated to head of state from his role as prime minister by a vote in Parliament on Wednesday. And to sports, Croatian forward Mario Hesonja has signed a two-year deal with Real Madrid. The 27-year-old comes from Unique Kazan, where he ranked eighth in the EuroLeague in both scoring and rebounding, and was second in defensive boards, only trailing Giorgio Papagiannis. He joined Unix after finishing the 2020-21 campaign with Panathinaikos, where he averaged 14.4 points, 2.5 rebounds, 1.3 assists, and 1.6 steals in eight EuroLeague games. The 2020-21 season was the Croatian forward's first back in Europe after spending the previous five seasons in the NBA with Orlando, New York, and Portland. Brentford have signed central defender Ben Mee on a free transfer following his departure from Burnley this summer. The 32-year-old who spent 11 years with the Clarets has signed a two-year contract with the Bees. Mee left Burnley when his contract expired following the club's relegation to the championship for the first time since 2015. He initially joined the Clarets on a season-long loan deal from Manchester City in 2011 before signing permanently the following August. Me ended last season by assisting caretaker coach Mike Jackson as uh, Burnley were relegated. And now we join Adeni Ajishafe for more on sports. Team Nigeria finished 8th at the African Taekwondo G4 Championship in Kigali, Rwanda. As Benjamin Okuomose won silver in plus 87 kilogram category in the final to Moroccan Ayub Basel. While Shola Oluo Kere won bronze in the semi-finals to Tunisia's Firas Katusi. In the women's category, Nigeria Olympian Elizabeth Ayanacho lost out to Egyptian Aya Shehata in the semi-finals to claim bronze medal. Technical Director of Nigerian Taekwondo Federation Edwin Osita says Nigerian team could not perform well due to weather conditions and lack of competitions before the G4 Taekwondo in Kigali, Rwanda. Morocco finished top with 15 medals, with 8 gold, 3 silver, and 4 bronze, while Egypt came second with a total of 13 medals, 3 gold, 5 silver, and 5 bronze. Cote d'Ivoire third with 7 medals, 2 gold, 3 silver, and 2 bronze. A total of 39 countries participated in the African Taekwondo G4 Championship, where Nigeria won silver and 2 bronze medals at the championship. And in football, 
Association of Nigerian Women in Sport, now we as congratulated Super Falcons player, Asisad Oshola, named African Women Players of the Year 2021-2022 season at the CAF Awards in Rabat, Morocco. Now we national president, Professor Bola Adinogu, says the association praised Asisad Oshola, who won the top award for a record fifth time for her patriotism and dedication to football at both her present club, FC Barcelona Feminine, and the nation's senior women's team, the Super Falcons. Professor Adinogu further described the striker as a perfect role model of how the girl child should be empowered through a fusion of sports, education, and leadership. Oshuala and her compatriot, Papesho and Kocha, were joint four-time winners of the award before she won the fifth time. That's Sport News. I am Adeni Ajishafe. And with that, we've come to the end of News Hour on Trust TV. For more news, connect with us across all our social media platforms. I am Deron Onifade. Have a nice weekend.